How many, you, how many of you in here have ever used a soap dispenser? A soap dispenser. Yeah, we all have. Uh, absolutely. Amen. Amen. A soap dispenser. Okay. And so what I want to talk to you a little bit about on this morning is something called a dispensation. A dispensation. Now, just use that simple example that I asked you a few moments ago. When you use a soap dispenser, all right, and it normally has a little nozzle on top, doesn't it? Yes, it does. And then it has a little spout to the side like that, right? And then what happens when you, when you squeeze that, that uh, nozzle right there, what happens? Yes, the soap comes out. The soap comes out. Absolutely. And usually, what are you holding underneath that soap dispenser? Your hand. Absolutely. Absolutely. Your hand. Your hand. Your hand. Now, now the question becomes, why would you have a need to uh, put some soap on your hands? Okay. And your hands may be a little what? Maybe a little dirty. Okay. And so the, so the soap, yeah, so the soap is used along with water to do what? To clean your hands, to clean your hands. Absolutely, absolutely. Now, how did the soap get into the dispenser? There you go. Someone had to put the soap in the dispenser. Absolutely. And so then just as someone has to fill a soap with dispenser, how many of you know that every now and then we need to be filled also? Hmm? Amen. Yes. We need to be filled also. Oh, yeah. And so on this morning, what I want to do is, how many of you ever heard of Joseph, the oh, character yeah. Joseph? Yeah. And if you know the story of Joseph, you understand that he was one of 12, 12 yeah. our brothers, okay? Oh, yeah. But there was something special about Joseph. There was something special about Joseph. Uh -huh. And the thing that was special about Joseph was, was that Joseph had what were called dreams. If y'all know that story, he had dreams. He had dreams. And because he had, because he had dreams, okay, his brothers didn't like him. His brothers didn't like him very much, you know. But now here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Because the brothers thought that those were Joseph's dreams. Huh? But in reality, where did those dreams come from? They came from the Lord. Absolutely, absolutely. God gave Joseph those dreams, okay? God gave Joseph those dreams. And as the Lord utilized Joseph, Joseph would give the interpretation of those dreams. Mm -hmm. And if you understand the story of Joseph, there was a, there was a uh, pharaoh who had some dreams, but there was no one around to tell him what the dreams meant. And so here comes who? Joseph. And they brought Joseph to Pharaoh because they said, now, Joseph, we know that you can interpret dreams. But now listen to what Joseph told them, though. And I like this here. Joseph told them, it's in Genesis chapter number 48. Let me just read it to you for just a minute. Genesis chapter 40, verse number 8. And it says, and they said unto Joseph, we have dreamed a dream, and there is no interpreter of it. Now listen to what Joseph said unto them. And Joseph said unto them, do not interpretations belong to God. Tell me them, I pray you. So what Joseph did right there is he acknowledged the fact that what he had, the gift that he had came from who? It came from God, absolutely. Joseph recognized that God was just utilizing him as a dispenser to give the interpretation as to what was going to happen in the future. Because the dreams that Joseph had basically told Pharaoh that there's going to come a famine and there's going, to be a, there's going to be a lack of food, but this is what you need to do. And so God used Joseph to tell Pharaoh what he needed to do. In other words, God utilized Joseph to meet a need. Now I'm going somewhere. Stick with me. Stick with me. And sure enough, sure enough, the famine came. But guess what, though? Because they listened to what God gave to Joseph, they were able to preserve life. Hmm? What we need to recognize and understand, my brothers and sisters, 
is that we own nothing. We own nothing. Everything that we have, God has given it to us. The very breath in our body does not belong to us. But it belongs to who? It belongs to God, absolutely. And so then the challenge becomes is, is that whatever God gives me, whatever God gives me, the challenge is, what am I going to do with it? Uh, with the breath that he gives me each and every day, when I wake up, I can do one or two things. I can take that breath and I can give God the glory, Amen. or I can take that breath and complain. The choice is what? The choice is yours, isn't it? Huh? Amen. He gives us choice as to what we do with what he gives us. Amen? Huh? Amen. And so then what we have to realize and understand is, is that each and every day that we wake up, God gives us an opportunity. And so the challenge is, what am I going to do with that opportunity? Now watch this here. What has God given you that you can give to somebody else? Hmm? That's the question. What has God given to you that you can give to someone else? Well, guess what? He's giving you a testimony. Yeah. The word, absolutely. God gives you the word of God. He gives you his word. Okay? And so what he expects is, is that when the time comes, you'll be able to do what? Give that word to somebody else. Right. Uh-huh. Just like Joseph. God gave Joseph the dream and the interpretation, but Joseph wasn't supposed to keep it to himself, was he? No. He was supposed to do what? Release it. Right. Release it. And so the challenge for us is that whatever God gives you, he gives you life, he gives you a testimony, he gives you experience. All of you in here older than I am, you've gone down the road that I'm traveling. And so the experience that you have in your life is a testimony that you can give to someone else. But you just have to be willing to release it, release that testimony, release your life experience that you know what, this is what the Lord did for me. This is how God helped me in my life. Because you never know how that might encourage someone else. Amen? Amen. Let's talk about the Apostle Paul for just a minute. The Apostle Paul. Okay? Now, the Apostle Paul, okay, it says he had the responsibility of laying the foundation, helping lay the foundation for the, for the, church, for the early church. Okay? Now, let me read this to you, and then I'm going to be finished. I want you to listen to what Paul wrote in Ephesians chapter... Uh, Two for just a minute, all right? Let me turn there for you. Because when you understand that Paul had the responsibility of laying the foundation for the early church, then you have to ask yourself, well, what was that foundation that Paul was responsible for giving? Now, listen to this right here. Listen to this right here. Now, this is what Paul told the Gentiles. Now, a Gentile was considered to be an individual who was not, who was not a Hebrew. If they, were not, if they were not a Hebrew, then they were considered to be a Gentile. So any other nationality other, other than the Hebrew nationality were considered to be he, were, were Gentiles. But now God's overall plan for salvation included everybody. Uh -huh. Not just the Hebrews, but it included everybody. The Greek, the Jews, everybody. It included everybody. So now if you look in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 19, listen to what Paul said here in his letter he said now he was writing to the gentiles he said now therefore gentiles you are no more strangers and foreigners because in the early in the early hebrew history gentiles were seen as strangers and foreigners but paul says you are no more strangers and foreigners but you are fellow citizens with the saints and the household of god so in that verse, what Paul was telling the Gentiles was that you are no longer strangers anymore, but you are now fellow citizens. You are now part of the household of God. Well, now, how was that possible? How was that possible? Well, verse 20, he says, And you are built upon the foundation of the apostles. In other words, what Paul was saying is the reason why you're no longer strangers is because you have the right, what? Foundation. Absolutely. You have the right foundation. Now, how did that foundation get there? That's where the apostles came in. That's where the apostles came in. 
Because as God would give Paul the revelation, the word of God, then Paul had to do what? Release it, didn't he? He had to release it to those that were lost. He had to release it to those who did not know who Jesus was. He had to release it not just to the Hebrews, but also to the Gentiles as well, all right? And so that was Paul's responsibility, was to release what God gave him. Now, listen to this right here. He says, and you are built upon the foundation of the apostles and the prophets. Well, who is that foundation? Jesus Christ himself. Jesus Christ is the foundation. Not only is he the foundation, but in the Bible they call him the chief corner stone. He's the stone that the builders, what? Rejected, absolutely. The very thing that the people rejected is the very one that God will utilize. What do I want to say on to you this morning? It makes no difference who might have rejected you. Makes no difference who may have left you. It makes no difference who may have forgotten about you. But the one thing that is important is, is that if you have the right foundation, you are not alone. If you have Christ in your heart, you are not alone. Uh, because Paul told the Gentiles, he said, you are no longer strangers. You are no longer foreigners. Why? Because you have received the right foundation. And so my encouragement to each and every one of you in here is that you are not a stranger. Huh? You are not alone. But when you have the foundation of Christ in your heart and in your mind, you are of the household of God. You are a part of the children of faith. Huh? And so each and every day that you wake up and that God gives you breath in your body, Rather than complaining and say, oh me, oh my, give God thanks and give God praise. Why? Because I'm still alive. And why? Because he has given me his word. And why? Because he has allowed me the opportunity to be able to open up my mouth and tell somebody else about his goodness. And, and to tell somebody else about how he kept me and how he brought me and how he made a way for me. And that if he did it for me and he's not a respected person, then guess what? He'll do it for you too. Huh. In this hour, we need you all as the seasoned citizens. We need you all as the senior citizens. Why? Because we're, we're living in a day and a time where there's a generation of people that are coming that they don't reverence God. They forgot about Jesus. They, they don't know who he is. But in this hour, we need you all, <laughs> the seasoned saints. Oh, you might not be able to move as quickly as you used to when you were at 20, but there's a testimony on the inside of you. Uh, you might not be able to go as fast as you used to go at 35, but, but in this hour, there's a need for you. Why? Because we are a generation of young people. We are a generation of youth that have forgotten where we came from. But sometimes it takes us visiting the retirement centers and visiting the retirement homes and, and, and coming and observing because if the truth be told, if God adds 20 or 30 more years to my life, guess what? I'm going to probably be right here as well. You see? So you do have a purpose. If anything, it's to give me an assignment. Lord, have mercy. If anything, you being here, it gives me an opportunity to come and share God's word. Because if you're not here, then guess what? There'll be no need for me to be here. Oh, help me, Jesus. So don't let people tell you that your life doesn't matter. Don't let people tell you that your life doesn't have purpose. Because each and every day that God wakes you up, it's an opportunity for your life to matter and for your life to count. I'm almost finished. I'm almost finished. Listen to what he says here. Listen to what Paul says in verse 3 of Ephesians. He says, for this cause, he says, I, Paul, the prisoner of Jesus Christ, for you Gentiles. In other words, Paul knew that his assignment was part, that his, part of his assignment was to minister to the Gentiles, was to minister to those that were lost. Listen to what Paul says. He says, if ye have heard of the dispensation, there's that word again, the dispensation 
of the grace of God, which is given to me for you. And so what Paul was saying was he wanted the Gentiles to know that God has given me a certain measure of grace. But I just can't keep this grace to myself. But I have to do what? Release it out of me, you see. He says, how that by the revelation he made known unto me the mystery of God's word. Now, in return, what God's expectation for Paul was that he do what? Release it. Now, how did Paul release it? One of the ways that he released it, released it was that he did what? He wrote it. That's why you have the epistle of Ephesians. That's why you have the epistle of Galatians. That's why you have the epistle of Romans. Why? Because Paul did what? Wrote what God gave him. And that was important not only for those back then, but guess what? Those letters are important when? Right now. Because we're still reading those letters, aren't we? We're still studying those epistles that Paul wrote. So it wasn't just given for the time back then, but it was given for who? Us right now. Amen. Watch this here. Watch this here. He says, I, he says, therefore he was given to me that I wrote it in a few words, he said. Uh-huh. Verse 4, he says, whereby when you read it. Right. So now Paul's expectation was, was that when I write it, then he wants the recipient to do what? Read it, Lord have mercy. Somebody better, y'all better come up here and get me. I'm about to, I'm about to go crazy up here. Huh? Huh? Paul said, listen, I'm going to write it. But now you've got to do what? Read it. Now, now let, let, me, let, me, let me bring it on home to you. Let me bring it on home to you. Now, some of you may not be able to write. However, you have to do this right here. Say it. I might not be able to write it, but I can open up my mouth and what? And say it. Come on here. Come on here. Somebody better help me here. If I can't write it, let me say it. But somehow or another, it's got to come what? It's got to come out of me. Each and every day that God wakes you up, it's an opportunity for that word, for that experience, for that testimony that's on the inside of you to do what? Come out of you. Some of you have been silent too long. I hear God saying, open up your mouth. And release your story to someone. Tell somebody about the good. Tell them how God brought you up. Tell them I was sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore. Buried deeply, stained within, sinking to rise no more. Tell them, but the master of the sea heard my despairing cry tell him and from the waters he lifted me now say am I oh come on that's the testimony of the church what's happening is that this generation of the church they're losing the foundation they're losing the testimony they're getting so caught up in programs and, and titles Paul says if I write it you read it the word of the Lord to you on today. If you open up your mouth and say it, then guess what? That challenges somebody to do what? Listen. To listen. All right. When Paul wrote it, the challenge for the people were to do what? Read what he wrote. Yes. When you open up your mouth and release the story of God in the atmosphere of the Oliver House, what you're doing is that you're challenging those around you. You're challenging those who listen to the very words that God dispenses out of your body to do what? Listen! Amen. Amen. For too long, there's been a lot of negative talk around here. But God said, now is the time for the saints of God, for the children of God, for the seasoned veterans of God, to open up your mouth and dispense out what God has done for you. To tell some of these young workers in here that God rules and that God reigns. There's a reason why you got a lot of young people working in here and serving you. Why? You got to open up your mouth and tell them. So 
some of these workers are having problems, are having challenges raising their young people, but you as seasoned mothers and daddies, you know what it is to raise a family. Open up your mouth and tell some of these young workers in here, baby, you got to sit down and pray. Baby, you got to get down on your knees. And if they ask you, well, how do you know? Because I did it as well. And if God helped me, if God did it for me, then he'll tell you how to raise your disobedient child. Oh, come on and clap your hands. Hallelujah. Paul said, I'm going to write it. It's up to the recipient to read it. The word of the Lord to you on today is open up your mouth and share your testimony. The challenge becomes will they listen to what you have to say. Now, here it is, and I'm getting ready to close out. Whereby, when you read, that you may understand the knowledge of the mystery in Christ Jesus. The bottom line, my brothers and sisters, what Paul said was that when I write it and the reader reads it, it all leads to who? The foundation of Christ. That they might do what? Understand. Thank you, Jesus. That the reader might understand more about who? Christ. Now, how does that relate to you and I? When we open up our mouth and say it, whoever the listener may be, we're not just talking about us. For we preach not ourselves, but who? Christ Jesus. So when I open up my mouth, I'm not going to boast about me. Oh, but when I open up my mouth, it's going to be a testimony of this man right here. And so as the listener opens up their ear, to hear what it is you have to say. At the end of the conversation, they should have a better understanding of who? Jesus Christ, absolutely. That was Paul's mission, that he released what it is God gave to him unto the people so that the people could have a what? A better understanding. That's the role of the church. That's the role of the church is to proclaim the good news, is to proclaim Christ Jesus, him crucified and resurrected. That's the message of the church in this hour, is to preach Jesus so that the congregation, so that those who listen might do what? Walk away with a better understanding of not the preacher, no but that they might walk away with a better understanding of who? Jesus Christ, the cornerstone foundation. The pastor is not the cornerstone foundation. The the, 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 the auxiliaries are not the cornerstone foundation. Jesus is the cornerstone foundation. And without him, there would be no pastor. Without him, there would be no church. The challenge for us in this hour is to open up our mouth and release the Jesus that's in you. Hallelujah. You've been planted here at the Oliver House as a resource, as a testimony to the youth that serve you. Because the majority of those that serve you are younger than you and you are their elder and God's challenge to you as an elder is to release your testimony to the younger generation that they might have a better understanding of Jesus Christ thank you Lord Father we thank you Lord, I thank you for speaking your word on today. I thank you, Lord, for the residents that are here at 
Oliver House. God, you preserved them, you kept them for such an hour as this, in which your church, the young people, this younger generation, they need a word, they need a testimony, they need to hear how good you are. And my prayer, oh God, is that you will release a level of boldness upon these residents that are here, Lord, upon these, your children, your seasoned saints that you will release a boldness in them, that they will release their testimony to help encourage yes. the ones that are coming behind them, Lord. Yes. Father, we thank you. Yes. We thank you for your word. We thank you for the dispensation that you give to us day in and day out. And Lord, I just come against the enemy. I come against intimidation. I come against the spirit of fear right now in the name of Jesus. Yes. Anything that hinders the move of God, from going forth into all of our house I cast it down right now in the name of Jesus I come against every stronghold I come against the spirit of oppression I come against the spirit of depression I come against the spirit of suicide right now in the name of Jesus I curse it to the root and I speak prophetically right now, God, that a release of new oil will be released over this facility, wall to wall, room to room, from the floor to the top of the ceiling, my God, that whosoever walks through that front door, God, that they will feel the anointing, that they will feel the presence of God being released in this facility right now in the name of Jesus. Amen. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. Satan, we make you out a liar right now in the name of Jesus. God, that you will utilize these seasoned saints to speak your word, to speak your goodness over this house. And we'll be so careful, Lord, to give you the glory, the honor, we pray over the administration in this place right now. We pray for every paid staff member right now in the name of Jesus. Touch right now, God. Let your anointing flow through this place in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Thank you right now. Thank you. Thank you, God. That when people leave and they go out those doors, that they'll have something to share with the town of Wendell, with the with Wake County. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That the Spirit of God is alive and well over at Oliver House. We thank you now. Hallelujah. And we give you the glory. In Jesus' name. Amen. Come on and clap your hands and give God Amen. praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, bless his day. Amen. 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 Yes. Amen. 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 keep us from falling and to present us faultless at his coming to him be dominion power honor and glory let the saints of God say amen amen amen, amen. 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 God bless you all thank you for coming we pray for